Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'll be sharing with you a simple stocks watch list tracker that I've developed to keep track of the different buy points of stocks that I intend to buy and invest for the long term. So this is for my long term investment stocks portfolio and I only invest in fundamentally sound and good companies. So if you're new to investing, be sure to check out my earlier video on how to identify good stocks for long term investment. So this watch list tracker uses Think or Swim RTD or real time data to receive live prices. So when you open a spreadsheet during market hours, this watch list will be updated and will change continuously as the market moves like how you see in my current spreadsheet. So I really don't like to spend time looking up the stock prices of companies every day. So normally when I've identified a fundamentally good stock that I want to invest for the long term, I will put it in this spreadsheet together with my research on the different potential buy points. So when I open this spreadsheet every day during market hours, I would immediately know if any of these stocks have reached my buy points and I can go ahead and purchase them. This definitely saves me a lot of time because in one glance, I can immediately tell if there are any stocks I need to purchase for today. As usual, if you're interested, you can always download this template for free. I've left a link down in the description below and if you're new to Think or Swim, be sure to watch my earlier video on how to set up Think or Swim RTD correctly. So let's get started. This spreadsheet is actually pretty straightforward. I will start off with column B first. So column B is where I input the sector or industry of the stock. You might be wondering why is this even relevant in a watch list? Hold on to that thought. I will explain it in a bit. Column C is where you input the ticker symbol of the stock you are interested in. Column D will automatically pull the last done of the ticker symbol using the Think or Swim RTD formula. And this column will display live prices of the stock during market hours. Column E is where I input the calculated intrinsic value of the stock. So there are many ways you can go about calculating the intrinsic value or fair value of a stock. For me personally, I'm using the discounted cash flow method to determine the fair value. So for those who are not familiar with discounted cash flow, it is basically a method to determine the value of a company today by projecting how much money it will generate in the future and discounting their future projected earnings back to present value. As you know, $1 in 10 years time is definitely worth a lot less than a dollar today and this is due to the effects of inflation. This is because prices of goods and services will generally become more expensive over time due to inflation. So with $1 today, you can probably buy a can of Coca-Cola, but in 10 years time, the same can of Coca-Cola may cost you $1.30. So the actual buying power or value of this $1 actually becomes lower with time. And the same concept is applied to discounted cash flow because the same $1 you earn in the future will definitely be worth a lot lesser than the $1 that you earn today. So in discounted cash flow, you are discounting the future earnings of this company back to present value to determine what exactly their future earnings is worth in today's value. So for each of the stocks in my watch list, I will calculate an intrinsic value and input in column E just to get a sense of whether at current prices is this particular stock overvalued or undervalued. Moving on to column F to J, this will be where I put in the different price points at which I will start buying the stock. So the reason why I have so many buy points is because let's say if you have allocated to buy $1,000 worth of a particular stock, I normally won't purchase the $1,000 worth of stocks all at one go because I want to buy in batches, especially when there is a major correction in the market. If there is a major correction like the one we saw in March of 2020, you never really know if the price of the stock has hit rock bottom, and prices may continue to fall for a couple of weeks or even months. So the more prudent approach will be to purchase your shares in batches as the prices move lower. So this concept is very similar to dollar cost averaging. You never want to buy the entire allocation for your shares all at one go. You always want to buy them in batches to average the cost of your purchase. So for me, 
I would usually buy 20% of my entire allocation at price point 1, 25% at price point 2, 30% at price point 3, and the remaining 25% at price point 4. So the next question you might ask is, how are the different price points determined? So my price levels are all determined based on key support and resistance levels that I've identified. If you're new to investing or someone looking to invest in the long run, I would definitely recommend you to watch my earlier video on how to identify key support and resistance levels. This will definitely be very useful in helping you to determine the right price levels to purchase your stocks. The other question you might be thinking is, how does the intrinsic value tie in with my different buy points? So my buy points are always close to or lower than the intrinsic value. The price points I've identified will never be higher than the intrinsic value of the stock because I will never buy shares of companies when they are overvalued, even if they are an extremely good company. As a long-term investor, you would always want to buy fundamentally good companies that are at a discount and below its fair value. I would like to share with you this famous quote from Warren Buffett. It's far better to buy a wonderful company at a fair price than a fair company at a wonderful price. So as a long-term investor, you need to be patient and wait for the right opportunity to invest. I've set up the formulas in column F such that the sell value will change to the different price levels whenever the last time price in column D reaches that price level. So take for example the case of United Health, UNH. The current last time price is at around $371, which is lower than my first buy point of $388. So cell F3 is showing the value of 1, telling me that it has reached my first buy point. If the stock price goes lower and hits my second buy point of $331, then cell F3 will show the value of 2. And the same for Microsoft. At the current last time price of around $237, it is still above my first buy point of $227, so cell F4 it's not showing any buy points yet. If it falls below $227, buy point 1 will be triggered and sell F4 will show the value of 1. So by setting up the formulas and color coding the cells in this way, when I open this spreadsheet during market hours, in one glance, I can immediately tell which of the stocks has reached any of my buy points and I can proceed to purchase them. Moving on to column L and O, these are just additional financial information of the company that I keep track as well. For column L, this is the price to equity ratio or PE ratio, which is calculated using the last done price in column D divided by the earnings per share in column N. Column N is the earnings per share TTM, which stands for trailing 12 months or the earnings per share for the last 12 months. Column M would be the price to book ratio or the PB ratio, which is calculated using the last done price in column D divided by the book value per share in column O. So column N and O are manual inputs. You can find such financial information of the stock easily using websites like Finvis. So if you go to finvis.com, type in the ticker symbol Let's say it's Microsoft MSFT. Scroll all the way down and you will see the entire table of the key ratios and financial information of Microsoft. So the EPS TTM can be found over here and the book value per share can be found over here. So if you're interested in other financial ratios, this website will definitely be very helpful because it has consolidated the key ratios all in one place. Coming back to the Excel spreadsheet, so whenever I update any of the ratios or buy points, I will update column A, where I input the date it was updated. I always do a review of my watch list at the end of every week, so as to keep the different buy points up to date. And whenever the quarterly earnings report for the company is released, I will also recalculate the intrinsic value 
and update them in the spreadsheet as well. So if you recall at the start of this video, I mentioned about putting in the sector of the stock in column B. So this is my own personal watch list. As you can see, I have a list of stocks that I'm looking to invest in from various industries and sectors. So by putting in the sector together with the color coding of my different buy points, it gives me a sense of the current market sentiments, or more specifically, which sectors of the stock market are currently overvalued and which sectors are undervalued. So you can see in one glance that the stocks from the consumer discretionary, consumer goods and defensive sectors are still pretty much undervalued and they have reached some of my buy points. For the financial sector, I would say that most of the stocks are really overvalued, especially for the banks. So as a long-term investor, now is definitely not the right time for you to buy into shares of companies in the financial sector as they are really overvalued. Some of the tech stocks in my watch list are also slightly undervalued and have also reached some of my buy points. So you can see that by including the sectors of the stock in my watch list, I will be able to easily get a sense of the current market sentiments in the different sectors. And this is also very helpful to me when it comes to identifying short-term option trading opportunities in the various sectors. So that's it for this live stock watch list tracker. As usual, you can always download this template for free using the link in the description below. If you have found this video useful, I would really appreciate if you could give this video a like. You can also subscribe to my channel as I post videos like this every Sunday and sometimes on Thursdays as well. If you have any other questions, feel free to leave them in the comments section below and I'll try my best to answer them. Thanks for watching.